Good morning. Today is a sermon in pieces, but our overall title is Amazing Grace. Now the first part of our sermon is a look at two words that Paul likes to use. The first is the word for sin that appears in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. Now sin is a very loaded word in the English language, but the word that Paul uses is hamartia in the Greek. And hamartia means to miss a target, as if you are stringing up an arrow, pointing it at your target, and you miss it. Therefore, if you take this kind of image that Paul is using, it's a failure to hit your target. So sin is a failure at life. You have a goal and you miss. You miss it so spectacularly that you are a failure. The second word appears in verse 5 of verse 2 of Ephesians, which is trespasses. Now the word he uses in the Greek is par... Sorry, I'm going to get this wrong. I apologize. Paraptoma, which translates as trespasses, but it is a slip or a fall. So, so think about it. You're walking and then you slip, you fall. You're no longer on the right path. And the more and more you try and get on the correct path, the more and more you slip and fall. Thus ends our vocabulary lesson for this morning. I hope you enjoyed it. And we continue on in our Ephesians chapter two. Now the Ephesians are from a Greek city known as Ephesus. It no longer exists in the modern world, but we have to know that Paul is writing to the Jews in that city who have become Christians. And there are certain things in this piece of work that don't quite make sense to us because they no longer exist. For existence, he's talking about following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work. What does that mean? This is not just hyperbole on Paul's part. He is actually speaking about a demon who was strongly believed in by the community to which he was writing. Also, when we move into verse 3, all of us once lived among them, among the passions of the flesh. This he would see as disobedience. It was a life that was characterized dis by disobedience. It was a slip. It was a fall that got worse and worse. Now, one thing we have to understand about Paul is he's writing about a catalog of different sins, about different hits and misses about different slippages that this group of Christians in Ephesus have all come upon and have all failed at. So he's writing a catalog of their sins, of their misses, of their walking along and taking the wrong path. But all is not lost. When we get to verse 5 in verse in chapter 2 forgive me even when we were dead because all sin in the eyes of Paul leads to death sin kills innocence sin kills ideals and sin kills the will of humans and therefore sin leads to death going back to verse 5 even when we were dead, even with all this sin, and even when we were dead, through God's love, with which God loved us, even when we were dead, through our trespasses, through our slippage, that's that word again, God made us alive together with Christ Jesus. By grace, you have been saved. There is that image of the cross again, which is behind me. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Can't get much clearer than that. 
through grace, through belief, through the cross, no matter what sin, no matter what hit and miss, no matter what trespasses, no matter what slippage, through Jesus, we find life again. Verse 7, so that in the ages to come, those are the ages that march throughout time to the end of time and past that, Christ might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Jesus Christ. Forgive me, God shows us this. For by grace you have been saved through faith. Because really, we were all dead. Sin kills innocence. Sin kills the ideals by which we lived by as Greeks. Sin kills the will of the human spirit. But faith and faith alone brings life again. Verse 8. For by the grace you have been saved through faith, as I read. For this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Paul would want you to underline that. This is the gift of God. You cannot do it alone. You need God to do it for you. Verse 9. Not the result of works. This is not your own doing. This is not you making a checklist of how to get into heaven and checking off each one. Not the result of works so that no one may boast. For we are what he, the Lord, has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, for which God prepared beforehand to our way of life. Simply, it is all in God's hands. God made us the way we are. God made us to be tempted just as Jesus was tempted. God made it possible for us to slip and fall. But the situation can be remedied, and that is through faith. And so this Lenten season, think about Jesus. He is reaching out a hand for you. He is reaching out and calling your name and saying, believe in me, have faith in me. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. And my God, has it been such a tunnel this year. But at the end of that tunnel, there is a light. More on that after these brief messages. said that everything is possible through faith in Christ, and the ultimate is possible through faith in Christ. 
life, everlasting life. Through worldly sins, through worldly life, there is only death and destruction. But through Jesus Christ, through a love of him, through faith in him, there is hope, there is life, there is fulfillment. Now, I have a happy announcement. I know many of you are aware, but we are reopening the church for Palm Sunday, which is March 28th, 2021. That will be approximately two weeks after the airing of this video. They say that all is possible through prayer, and I think this proves that with prayer, almost anything is possible. So I hope to see you all there, masked and socially distanced, of course. We will be following all guidelines set out by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, just so you know. And hope to see you there. God bless, stay safe, and be happy. Amen.